Many people living in the Pomona Valley may be surprised to learn that the Chafee Community Museum of Art, known as CCMA, has been in continuous operation for 80 years. Known as the Chafee Community Art Association, CCAA, until 2000, its goals have remained consistent to stimulate and foster interest, education, and enjoyment of the visual arts in the communities of the Pomona Valley. Although CCMA has had several different physical locations, it is now located at 217 South Lemon Avenue in the Arts District of Downtown Ontario. Since 1941, CCMA has supported and encouraged the creativity of the artists of the region and provided a permanent home for a select group of historically significant California paintings, sculpture, and ceramics. Always supported by artists, art patrons, art lovers, and enthusiastic volunteers, the history of this organization and the growth of its historical collection are intertwined with the history of the Pomona Valley and its art communities. I am Dr. Wendy Slatkin, an art historian and author of the book titled Portrait of a Community, Selections from the Chafee Community Museum of Art. Today I'm going to trace the history of the organization and introduce you to a few works in the collection. The founders of the CCAA were Francis and Helen Line, a creative couple living in Ontario. They were lifelong adventurers, travelers, authors, and film documentarians. In the 1930s, they formed a successful company producing travel and educational films. Shortly after Francis returned home to Ontario from a trip to the Pacific Rim to film the volcanic activity he termed the Circle of Fire, their eight-year-old daughter Barbara was diagnosed with leukemia and died a few weeks later in January 1941. By April of that year, the Lines had decided to create a collection of art to commemorate their daughter and to establish, quote, a worthwhile treasure for the whole community, unquote. On this wall of the museum, we have portraits of our founders, Francis and Helen Line, and this portrait of their daughter, Barbara. This was the first work acquired for the Barbara Line Memorial Collection. In addition to this portrait of Barbara by Marion Vale Olds, the Lines purchased eight other paintings, forming the Barbara Line Memorial Collection, which is the seed from which the CCMA's historical collection grew. These were eclectic choices painted by living California artists. Two of these works demonstrate the range of the line selections. Conrad Buff's Desert River was the largest and most epic choice for this group. The scale of the work was inspired by Buff's mural work in the 1920s and 30s. The extremely high horizon line creates a dizzying, elevated viewpoint. Although one could relate Buff's brushwork to Impressionism, the absence of movement and the solidity of the mesas create something essentially different from the Impressionist sense of capturing a moment in time and nature in flux. They also selected Anna Wilson's Dorothy for the Barbara Line Memorial Collection. This uncommissioned portrait is typical of Wilson's style. The orange jacket and the printed dress present an interesting artistic challenge. Since orange is a warm color that advances visually, the rest of the image needs to counteract this effect to maintain a unified pictorial surface. There are at least three different methods of paint application in the work. By varying her technique, Wilson makes sure that the dress and background do not detract from the viewer's attention to the sitter's face. The painterly background with visible brushwork is a hallmark of Wilson's style when she was at the height of her career. From this initial group of nine works, local artists such as Millard Sheets eagerly stepped up to support the fledgling organization. In 1941, Sheets donated Mesa Twilight to the CCAA. The work is a fine example of California scene watercolors. It is dominated by long, horizontal, sweeping brushstrokes. 
The small scale of man, house, and horse is contrasted to the vast expanse of sky, generating a sublime, awe-inspiring view of nature. This scene evokes a nostalgic sense of the Old West before the era of urbanization and population migrations of the 20th century. The group held annual exhibitions starting in 1941, which attracted prominent regional artists. One especially important event in the early history of the CCAA was the exhibition Portrait of a Community, held in 1943. Francis Line invited artists such as Anders Aldrin to come to Ontario and create work inspired by the region. This archival photo shows downtown Ontario as Aldrin would have seen it. In Euclid Avenue, Aldrin displays an original style drawn from a range of sources. The thick paint and saturated colors resemble Van Gogh's technique, while the flattened space reveals a reliance on another post-impressionist master, Gauguin. Yet the focus on a local landmark brings us into the contemporary world. Like Edward Hopper, Aldrin finds the dignity in a contemporary urban environment, elevating the commonplace street vista, which would have been familiar to his audience, into something powerful and beautiful. We can see that any building, however undistinguished architecturally, can become the inspiration for a great work of art. The most important work to be shown in that exhibition was Esther Bruton Gilman's series of seven fascinating mixed-media works documenting the creation of the Kaiser Steel Mill in nearby Fontana. These are two of the seven works in this series. A well-known artist in San Francisco, Esther married Carl Hooper Gilman, who was hired as a civil engineer in 1942 to work on the Kaiser Steel plant. As his wife, she was permitted to document the construction of this industrial behemoth. Line wrote, quote, Her work thus became not only a contribution in the field of art, but also a significant historical record, unquote. Despite all this activity, the CCAA lacked a permanent home. The growing collection was displayed at the Chafee Memorial Library on the campus shared by Chafee High School and College and circulated to other schools, public libraries, and public service agencies as well as to commercial venues such as banks, law offices, and retailers. The collection was termed a living art gallery by LA Times art critic Arthur Miller. It moved around the community in keeping with the CCAA's goals to educate and develop art appreciation in the broadest possible regional population. Annual purchase prize shows were held which also expanded the collection. This important work by renowned surrealist Helen Lundeberg entered the collection as the Purchase Prize of 1949. The clouds retains recognizable imagery, lacks a human presence, and is mysterious and evocative. This image is intended to elicit an emotional response from the viewer. It was executed during a period in her career between surrealist representation and pure abstraction, and therefore, is an important transitional work by a major woman artist. This surrealist painting by Jean Ames, Moon in the Thorn Tree, was the purchase prize of 1950. Jean Ames was a well-known artist who created in a wide range of media, especially enamels for which she is best known. She taught at Scripps College and the Claremont Graduate School from 1940 to 1962 and chaired the art department at the Graduate School from 1962 to 1969, 
influencing a generation of local artists. The five female figures, all with a simplified, idealized anatomy, are playing music in an eerie, moonlit landscape set in front of the thorn tree of the title. The work is executed in a dense, painterly style, with saturated primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, as well as green. Both the painterly surface and the black outlines, reminiscent of Ames's work in enamels, flatten the pictorial space. Well-known surrealist Lorser Feidelson characterized Ames' iconography here as, quote, an inner Celtic world of fairy and enchantment, unquote. Over the next two decades, the CCAA survived despite the lack of a permanent home. Raffles, patio dinners, meetings with noted artists such as Rex Brandt and Douglas McClellan as speakers, one-person shows of artists such as Milford Zorns and Jean Ames, and fall purchase prize exhibitions kept the group active. While some activities lagged, the assumption of the presidency by Robert George and Harriet White as vice president in 1979 injected some needed energy to the group. Due to the efforts of Robert George, the City of Ontario was persuaded to provide space in the former City Hall for cultural programs. After extensive renovations, the Ontario Museum of History and Art, OMHA, opened in July 1981. The CCAA was the art in the Ontario Museum of History and Art. When Harriet White passed away in 1981, her estate donated a large number of works to the collection, increasing its holdings substantially. Upon George's death in 1999, the CCAA was given a large group of his works, now designated the Robert George Memorial Collection. Although OMHA provided a home, CCAA was a tenant in the building, and after 20 years had outgrown the allotted space. Beginning in 2000, the Filippi Winery offered permanent gallery space to the CCAA. Luann Svensson, wife of noted local sculptor John Svensson, was board president and shepherded the move to the winery. A series of shows for noted regional artists were held. In 2011, Milford Zorn's watercolors were presented in a retrospective accompanied by two beautifully illustrated publications, which included tributes from other noted watercolorists. Another major show at the Filippi Winery was devoted to Martha Underwood. She was an important member of the Millard Sheets Studio, who then taught at Chafee College for nearly three decades, influencing many generations of artists of the Pomona Valley. Her impressive watercolors continue the tradition of the California scene painters of the 1930s. The art gallery at Filippi was dedicated to Luann Svensson, but it was not an ideal space for the storage and display of art. The organization, now designated a museum, continued to look for a permanent home. 2013 saw the organization's move back to Ontario as sole tenant in its own building. Located opposite the OMHA, the structure had originally housed the Ontario Power Company and had become city property in the 1950s. CCMA's return to Ontario was championed by Ontario City Council member Deborah Doris Porada, who advocated for the integration of art in civic life. At last, the CCMA had total control of its own space. Recognizing an Artist of the Year was a concept initiated in 2005 to honor Milford Zorns for his contributions to the art world and his support of CCMA. 
Since then, this honor has been bestowed annually on a select group of 16 regional artists whose works justified this significant designation. The Artist of the Year program is one way that the efforts of regional artists can be acknowledged. It is an important mechanism for raising the public profile of the larger art community of the Pomona Valley. Since at least one work by each of the named artists is in the permanent collection, it is also a way to build the CCMA's holdings with characteristic examples by outstanding local artists. In 2021, on the occasion of its 80th anniversary, CCMA published a monograph illustrating selected works from its collection, accompanied by scholarly essays providing historical context. The publication of this volume and the creation of this documentary are the visible signs of the resilience and relevance of this institution for the artists and art lovers in the communities of the Pomona Valley. The Chafee Community Museum of Art is conveniently located in the Arts District of downtown Ontario. Parking and admission are free and exhibits change regularly. To learn more about CCMA, its collection and current exhibits, visit us online at www.chafeemuseum.org. Follow us on Facebook or call 909-463-3733.